though, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Hello and welcome back to another video here. Uh, in the last video, we talked a little bit about cascading order and working from lowest to highest priority. Basically, if you write in a style, it's the last one that's written that's basically going to win as far as the cascading order goes. Uh, but not just that, but you're working in the HTML section for that cascading order more or less. So uh, inside the head, depending on which one of link or style goes first, uh, the last one gets drawn and that's what you're going to see. Same thing with inline, which is overridden by important. And we're going to have a similar conversation in this specificity conversation here. Um, specificity hierarchy references lowest to highest priority of uh, overriding things. So aside from cascading, which talks about all else being equal, this makes things unequal, so to speak. So You've seen before that we have elements and then we also have pseudo elements and we have uh, classes, pseudo classes, and attribute selectors, which includes the attributes themselves and their values. We have IDs. We have uh, inline styles, which you've seen, and you, have not, you just saw the important uh, add-on into CSS in the last cascading video. We won't really touch on the pseudo elements and the pseudo classes right now or the attribute selectors. We're going to focus mainly on element, class, ID, inline, important. And I want you to see basically how this is work, going to work. Now, let me jump over into... Oh, let me jump over into our HTML. The last we left it off kind of looked like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in new HTML and I'm going to introduce you to something called an anchor tag. So let's go at the top of the body here above the H1 and we're going to include what's called an anchor tag. An anchor includes an opening and closing A with the forward slash obviously on the closing. The href attribute points to where we want this particular tag which is called a hyperlink. And when we have a hyperlink, where do we want it to go to? Google.com or another page or a phone number or an email. There's a lot that a anchor tag can do. In this case, we're just going to put in, for now, a hashtag. And what that will do is refresh the page. So we're just going to call that one refresh. And uh, let's go ahead and open that up and take a look. Refresh. Now refreshes the page. So we have one of those, but what I want to do is I want to create, whoops, excuse me. I want to create another one, and then I want to look at that. Now refresh, refresh, if I create another one or even more, now I'm getting them all across the top here. I want them to sit in their own kind of section, more or less. So I'm going to add in another new element to you, which will be called a, uh, let me go ahead and remove this, a div. And a div is just an empty element. There's nothing in it. So if I add this div and I go back, there's nothing at the top. And then once I add in the anchor tag, then we're going to get something at the top. Oop, did I no. refresh? Oh, there we go. I just got to scroll up. So then we get the refresh. And I want to create a few of these. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to duplicate one, two more. And this one's going to be called bookmark. And this one's going to be called new page. No, let's call it new document page. Okay. How about for even more clarity, new document slash web page. So we have these three links. And each one's on its own line because it's in its own div. And we'll talk about why that is coming up in the future. Uh, but for now, all you need to know is it's basically going to give it its own line for uh, clarity on, on what we want it to look like. Now, in between each one of these divs, I want to give them a little space. So I'm going to come in here and say div margin bottom. And we're going to say, um, let's give it 50 VH, which is a lot. And we go back in here 
50 VH, that stands for viewport height. Depending on your screen, your screen is called your viewport. So whether you're using your phone or a different monitor from a computer, your laptop, whatever, your TV even, that screen is your viewport. And the height of it, that 50, would be 50% 50 of that height, basically. Um, so that's just like a little crash information on VH. Uh, we've given those divs a little bit of height, and now you can see that it gives us a, a little room down the page. And this is what I want for now. So getting back to the specificity conversation, if we have a anchor tag, we have uh, something called a text decoration. And right now, everything has an underline. So what I want to do is I want to look at making no underline. So I've specified that. But as we know, if I come back down after, even in the same place, tech de text decoration, none, and I save that, well, now there are none. And if I was to create, a, you know, a separate, uh, let's go ahead and X, and what we're going to do is create a separate one for appropriateness. And we say, text decoration underline so we go from none back to underline now all of them are underlined again and the point is the last one drawn as you know cascading order all things being equal we're starting out with this element but let's say we now want to very simply go back to and we're just going to switch this back and forth for now um, let's go ahead and go back to none but how do we do that well we have uh, the order of specificity here, which specifies that elements are overridden by classes. So let's go there next, and we're going to create a class, and we have to do that in HTML. Uh, let's target. Uh, let's target that one. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wrong button. Let's just go here. No, not style. Excuse me, class. And we're going to call it uh, we're going to call it oh geez just uh, anchor one and um, we're also going to copy that and put it down over here and anchor one so now let's go in here and what we're going to do is say dot anchor one text decoration and right now we have it underlined because we have it none, then we have it underlined. So let's go back to none, save that and check it out. And so what we have is none on the top and bottom one, but the middle one still has one. And that's because we didn't put that additional class, which overrides the uh, elements. And what we have here is an order of, um, priority based on based on uh, this lowest to highest priority but there's a better way to, to phrase that and visualize that and that is by going here to uh, this section here so let's see uh, yep these right here at the end I put these and very commonly you might say one or ten or a hundred or a thousand uh, or you might put in the dashes to reference it but you're building up this this visualized number or you know theoretical number of priority and so when we go over to um, when we go back over to the document here we have oh let's let's talk about that uh, so uh, elements add in one on the end classes add 10 or a one in the second digit IDs add a hundred or one in the third and inline add a one 1000 or a one in the first digit there or the fourth or however you want to look at that if this is first it's fourth or this might be first second third fourth but either case i would i would call it the fourth digit um how regardless of how you look at it it's going to build up priority any anything in this category is going to be any number in the other category here so any number of these will be any number of these and any number of these will be any number of these and so on right and so let's go back to 
the document and look at what we have. Well, here we have a priority of zero, 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 one. And same thing right here, zero, 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 one. So these things are equal, which means that we're gonna go to the cascading um, because they only have one priority. Now this one has a priority of 10 or, you know, zero, zero, one, zero. And so this one is gonna automatically override the other two. And it's gonna be text decoration none, regardless of what the other two say. Now let's go into priority level three. Three, uh, which is going to be a uh, an ID. And we have to put an ID somewhere. Let's go ahead and put it on this bottom one for the time being. We're gonna give this an ID of, you know, anchor unique, sure. Anchor unique. And we're gonna go here and we're gonna target it with the hashtag and say anchor unique. We're gonna target that, give it a tech. Uh, now we wanna override something else. So let's give it a color of oh, color of white and then a background color of black and so let's see how that looks on the page and all of them are black background with white and with this new one I want to override two things one currently text decoration none so I'm gonna say text decoration and I'm gonna say underline again so that we can show that we're overriding the class. And then to show that we're overriding everything else, let's also make the color uh, color black with a background color of gold. Sure, why not? And so now we have the background color of gold with black text and it is underline overriding the class uh, authorization of none because the anchor one and the unique, so the anchor one class and the anchor unique ID are both on this same exact anchor, which is showing and demonstrating that, you know, you override by specificity. If everything was equal and let's say you know, we only had a class on there. Maybe we have a different class on the same one because you can add multiple classes and we'll get into that. But let's say all things else being equal, the point is cascading will take over at that point, whichever one was drawn last. Now let's go in here and talk about just overwriting this one more time uh, because if we go back to the order here, we have elements, we have classes, we have IDs, and then we have the inline style and so if we go in here and we create a style tag and now we want to change the background color to something crazy or I don't know uh, cadet blue and then we want to change the color to something like maroon let's just see how that looks and we go back here and we have cadet blue and maroon and it's overriding everything else that we've done. And so right now it's underlined and we could say, um, just to prove that we are overriding this particular ID, let's go uh, text decoration, none. And just to verify that we did indeed take it out. So the very last one is we can override everything. And we can come in here and we can say important, right? And we can give it that, that exclamation important, which we do not want to use pretty much ever. But let's just say we are like, hey, it's really important that these things, uh, I want them to be no decoration. I want the color to be white and I want the background color to be black. And then all of a sudden, you have that importance put on it and they're all back the way that you would expect them to be. And so, again, we don't want to get in the habit of that too much, but that's something that you want in your arsenal. So with that said, let's go back to 
uh, the tags now that we've covered pretty much now specificity hierarchy you know the elements come first classes IDs inline then important we're not going to get too much into pseudo elements but they are on the level of elements same thing with pseudo classes and attribute selectors which include both the attribute and the attribute value uh, so those come second in priority, then IDs, then inline, then important, it's gonna override everything. And you can use that specificity chart, whether you're talking one, 10, 100,000, or if you're talking about uh, places and digits, the ones place, tens, the hundreds place, the thousands place, so to speak. Uh, so that would be um, a good coverage on, on specificity. I think that, you know, this gives you a really solid idea of what's going on with that. So let's finish talking about this because we have a new document uh, web page and let's see here so we built a different page or if we didn't no we didn't build a different page so here I'll delete I'm, I'm actually not going to delete this because all I'm doing is putting this into uh, my folder and the same folder that we're already inside of for our reference project or for our index.html apps.css reference project folder um, if we put the same page by doing add or however you want to add in that HTML file, all I did is was name mine different page. And then just remember that dot HTML extension, it's not automatically going to do it for you. So literally spell in dot HTML when you spell in your own uh, name of your file. So that said, once you've got that created, like I do, then we're going to go different page dot HTML. I put in here, this particular anchor hyperlink and I put in an H1 to show hello world and just verify that this is kind of like building a brand new document, right? It's like starting all over again. That's all we're doing. Uh, it's got the doc type, it's got the HTML tags, the head, the body, all that stuff is still there. And all I'm doing is putting this anchor tag that says back to index.html, which is this one here. And then I also put a hello world in there for an H1. In here, in the index.html, and let's, by the way, let's go ahead and enlarge this. Uh, inside the index.html, I wanna find, let's see, I wanna find uh, this anchor tag. Where did all my, oh, here we go. Okay, the href. In the href, I'm going to delete the hashtag and I'm going to tell it where to find that document, which is right next to me, different page.html in the same file. So I'm just going to say different page.html. And so I save that. I'm going to come back out here. And now, right here where it says new, new document web page, boom, it's going to bring me out here. And because I created this one here that references back inside the href and points back to this other document. So now when I click back on that one, it's gonna bring me back exactly to the page that I was just on and I can bounce back and forth between those pages. And so a hyperlink, an anchor tag is a really great tool. You can, again, you can make it an email address, you can make it a phone number, you can make it a link to you know, uh, Google, you can make it a link to a different HTML file. There's a lot that you're going to be able to do with it, and we will be going into some good detail on that. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and move on to what else it can do for the sake of this video to end. Um, and we're going to also make a bookmark. So we're going to refresh the page, we're going to make a bookmark, and you just made a link to another page. So to make a bookmark, we're going to use an ID here. And first thing you, you want to do is target one of the elements to make an ID on. So we're going to give an ID and say bookmark target. Oop, not target, target. Okay, so we have our bookmark target. And up here in the bookmark, we want to then tell it hashtag because that's what an ID is. We do want the hashtag there. And we're going to say bookmark target. So we save that. And... We're going to go back to the HTML, which refreshes, and I'm going to hit bookmark target. Now, what it's trying to do is target the pretext because that's where we put the ID bookmark target. What it's trying to do is bring it all the way to the top of the page. So if I was going to put a little space under the uh, pre tag by saying pre and then going here and saying um, uh, margin bottom and viewport height, uh, let's go 100 viewport height 
that'll be one whole viewport down 100% of the view shifts down underneath it so now uh, if we refresh we have all this extra space and when I hit bookmark it's trying to bring it right to the top of the page so that's how we make a bookmark on a page then finally this uh, hyperlink at top that's refresh what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take this whole section and I'm just going to cut it out and I'm going to go down to the bottom of the page here under the pre tag way at the bottom I'm going to save that and what I'm going to do is refresh this page I'm going to say bookmark and then right here this refresh I hit that and it brings me back up to the top of the page because all it's doing is adding on that little uh, this little uh, hashtag onto the end of the address bar and then taking me to that spot just like when I click bookmark it's adding on bookmark target up in the address bar and bringing me to that bookmark and then if I hit refresh boom it's just gonna bring me back to that same one and if I delete it and I just hit enter it's the same page but as soon as I hit uh, anything like that refresh it's gonna add that back in there and that won't go away even if I refresh my page a bunch now so that is it for now that gives you a basic introduction on on this anchor element and there is a lot more to that that we're going to be getting into detail on over time that said uh, we did get into the specificity and I will provide these files to you as always uh, you can come check this out cascading and specificity work with selectors to target specific elements and this will give you a really good tool in your belt to be able to go in and specifically you know target different things that basically if you have uh, you know we're, we're gonna get into ways that you can add multiple elements to build five of five of this first digit over you know four three two one and that overrides the other ones so there's a lot that you can do and play with I think you probably understand and get the point I appreciate your time at this point in the video thanks for hanging out sticking around I will catch you in the next one see ya